welcome to you inside Carver Arena here in downtown Peoria. And we got another night of Valley action for you, pitting Bradley against Evansville right here on the Valley on ESPN. Good evening, everyone. Again with Matt McLean, I am Brian Beto. And Matt, Evansville comes into this matchup looking for their first Valley win of the season. On the flip side, Bradley's been cooking here at home. So if the Aces are going to come away with the win, they're going to have to do it against a Bradley team that has not lost on the court in over a year. Yeah, that's 16 straight victories at home here for Bradley at Carver Arena. Meanwhile, Evansville hasn't won a Missouri Valley Conference game the last 14. So both teams working with some big numbers, see if they can continue those streaks tonight. Well, let's start with the Aces. A ton of new covers for Evansville, but we'll circle in for one. That's Kenny Strawbridge. Yeah, and it's his birthday today. So what would you like to see, Purple Aces fans? A big performance from Kenny Strawbridge. He's been really, really good as of late. Uh, you see right there, 16 points Saturday in that game against Illinois State. They fell just a little bit short, but in another big performance for him today for the Purple Aiders to have a chance in this one. And for the Braves, one of their vocal leaders and starting point guard, Duke Dean. Yeah, Duke Dean has really solidified the point guard position for the Braves. Uh, he's got a team high 38 three pointers this season. And the last five games, he's really, really helped Bradley take care of the basketball assist turnover ratio well over two to one. So doing a really good job running the Bradley offense and expect a big night from Bradley's guards tonight, starting with Duke Dean. All right, Matt, we're about ready to get rolling here. Evansville, they, they got a slew of uniforms to choose from. They're going with the blacks, and you got the purple on the, the trim and the side, the numbering as well. They'll come out wearing that tonight. They'll run out this starting lineup as well. Gage Bob, Marvin Coleman, who's been red hot for the Aces. Yasin Toomey, who's had three double-doubles this year. And then rounding it out with the aforementioned Kenny Strawbridge and Preston Phillips for Evansville. Bradley, on the other hand, a very similar look to what we've seen, uh, especially a healthy Bradley squad. The run out, Zeke Montgomery, Connor Hickman, Malavai, Leons, Duke Dean, you just heard about him, and Rink Mass to round it out for the Braves. Again, a hodgepodge towards the top of the Valley heading into action last night. A lot of four and two teams, which is what Bradley stands in coming into this matchup tonight. Evansville, as we said, just a moment ago, still searching for their first Valley win of the season. And this long rivalry in the Missouri Valley, the 61st all-time matchup between these two programs is underway as the Braves control the tip. Dean finds Leons. He was hot last game and stays that way with an open knee possession three. Yeah, perfect start for Bradley. Get the ball to Malavai Leons outside the three-point line and knocking it down. See if Bradley's defense can get a stop here to go with that first possession bucket. Toomey, baby hook, spins out and one and done. Both these teams very good when it comes to defensive rebounding. Yeah, and because of that, both teams want to hurry up and get out in the offensive transition as well. Bradley, good job getting the ball out. Let's see what they can do here with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Montgomery. Good effort on the floor, and it's won by the Aces, and quickly Coleman to bring it up. And an answer on the right side by Gage Bogue. And the Braves quickly back the other way. Leons will answer. That's an early on three-point contest. We see two threes from Malavai. Leons, Gage Bogue getting involved. And he's a guy from Evansville's perspective really need to get Gage Bogue going a little bit. The last game against Illinois State, knocked down two three-pointers in the first half. And a guy that Coach Raglan really wants to start seeing shoot the ball a little bit more. Good sign to see him getting that going early. And also going early, Malavai Leons as well. Yeah, Leons, who came in at 39% from three. The Braves at home shoot 41% from beyond the arc. Deep in the shot clock, here's Toomey. Montgomery up the floor. They, they got feed mass, mass but yeah. great anticipation by Coleman. He takes it away. He that, That's a team leading 21st steal. For Coleman, left corner three is off the mark and lands the rebound. And a whistle and an off the ball foul. I believe that's gonna go on Phillips. 
And now we, we got a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by your Peoria area Toyota dealers. Yeah, starting with the Purple Aces, you got to start fast. They've fallen behind early in almost all six of their Valley games. In fact, they've only had a lead in two of their six games so far this season. So need to stay within striking distance early on. See Connor Hickman, the three ball, knocking it down. As well as, excuse me, Brian, getting off to uh, the offensive group. Need to get Strawbridge and Coleman going to hit those offensive glasses as well. They average nine <laughs> offensive rebounds per game and see him an aggressive take to the hoop. And there's Strawbridge there. He's able to get to the basket and he's a high volume shooter. And he gets on the board here tonight. Mass backing his way in and good touch by the big man underneath. Yeah, beautiful left hand hook shot from Rink Mass. Just Asserting his dominance down there, backing down to the defender. Phillips couldn't really stay with him in a beautiful lefty hook. Straw Bridge, we referenced it in the open. He's one of 10 Evansville newcomers. Hickman gets the deflection. It'll stay with Evansville. 14 to shoot, and we're going to get our look, our first look at Deshaun Henry tonight. The Braves' active leading score. We'll check in for Montgomery. Brian wrapping up our keys to the game as well from the Bradley side. Uh, pushing tempo, got to create fast break opportunities offensively, and they want to speed up Evansville as well on this side of the floor too to create some turnovers. You'll see a nice three-pointer there from Coleman. He's one of their keys, absolutely. And then for Bradley, it's all about protecting home court, going for their 17th straight home win tonight. That one spins off the rim. And the Aces will push it up the floor, but getting it a little too ambitious is Toomey. Henry the other way with the slam. You can't stop Deshaun Henry on the fast break. Speeds ahead of the defender, the two-handed flush. Strawbridge, who spent the last two seasons at Alabama State, gives to Coleman, who spent four years at UNLV. They lob it back door, looking for Phillips underneath, trying to create space, and Mass defended that well. Yeah, that was terrific defense by Rink Mass, and nobody stops ball for Evansville. Can't get the three to go down, but a good look from Duke Dean. Strawbridge lost it. And it will turn it back over to Bradley when we come back 1548 to go here in the first half off to a fast start in Peoria with the Braves up five. And what if I need help picking a plan? State Farm's here to help. What up, Bob? Okay, guys. What if he's not actually 7'4"? We good? Yeah, we good. Good work today, boys. Oh, it's a living. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. There it is, the largest gig speed network. It's so fast, it's game on for the whole house. Okay, you spent way too much time rehearsing that. The champ here, his gig speeds run on can't catch me Wi-Fi. And these upstairs all-nighters rock Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. We booked a gig? Not that kind of gig. We're talking about Xfinity X5. It puts the gig in gig speed. Bradley University student athletes live their sport. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. Bradley 13, Evansville 8. As we get a look at the Braves in their matchup on Saturday, a 22-point win for Bradley over Valpo. And that score actually probably makes it look a little bit closer than it actually was. The Braves led by more than 30 at, at one point, but five different Braves in double figures, and that one a balanced attack. They shot the ball well. They were great defensively, and a really uh, dominant performance from Bradley. Yeah, we see the 19 points from Al Leon. He had five threes in that ball game. Bradley doing a really good job 
um, connecting from behind the arc. Vila Tava Niner was three for four as well, too. And you mentioned it, Brian. Bradley shoot 41% from behind the three-point arc here at Carver Arena. That's been a huge, huge part of their success here at in Peoria. As a matter of fact, winning 16 straight home games, you know, you get those three balls to go down. It's going to really, really help you win a lot of ball games. And, you know, right now, Bradley really has it rolling at home. We see a good offensive start here with 13 points in the first four minutes and change. And, you know, Evansville doing a good job keeping it close early on as well, too, to the first four minutes of the game as one of our keys of the game. They get a look to Mass out of the timeout. He backs his way in and fades and left it a little too strong. And the rebound to Toomey, who does have three double-doubles this year. He's a rebounding machine for Evansville. Evansville without both Gabe Spinelli and Sekou Kaye today. So we might see a shortened rotation like we saw on Saturday in their game against Illinois State where they played just seven as Leons is called for the foul, trying to add to his team leading total in blocks, but two free throws upcoming for Evansville. Yeah, and tonight for Evansville, just seven scholarship players dressed once again too. So you're gonna see a short bench and you know, having a good start like this, sticking in, you know, five point deficit with a chance to get to three here. Evansville doing a good job of staying close early on. As Strawbridge to the line, a 69% foul shooter. Evansville as a team, and David Ragland talked about being more efficient at the line and, and quite frankly capitalizing in their loss against Illinois State. They forced 19 turnovers. They also got to the line a bunch, but they felt like they didn't capitalize on the mistakes by their opposition, and that's what led to the defeat. One of two from Strawbridge. Hickman off a curl. He floats one up, and it spins off, but he'll shoot two. Yeah, beautiful offense right there. Connor Hickman coming from the far corner along the baseline. Rink Mast sets the screen for him, and Hickman realizes that his defender's trailing him. So he's just going to curl this, coming right off. Little floater in the lane, no good, but gets fouled. Opportunity for two free throws. So Hickman gets his first point. And we're going to see both Vile Tavaninen and, and Darius Hanna check in for the Braves. Again, the Braves searching for 17 in a row here at home. That is the currently the 10th longest home winning streak in the country. When we began our game prep map, it was 11th, but Kentucky got upset last night at home against South Carolina. So it's moved up to 10th, and right now as well, Arkansas is in that top 10, and they got a tough matchup against Alabama currently. So Braves, and that game's apparently tied at halftime. We'll keep you updated on the action around the Valley as well. Two other games in play tonight. Hickman tries to split a pair of defenders, and he'll get back to the line, blocking foul, I believe. Phillips was in the restricted yeah. area, and it'll be two for Hickman. Yeah, the Evansville bench thought that one was a charge. Phillips did a good job of sliding over, took that one in the chest, get another look at it as Hickman drives through the seam. And he was outside of the he restricted was. zone, so they just call him sliding underneath. One of those 50-50 plays goes the way of Bradley, and Hickman goes back to the free throw line. So Hickman, who just split a pair moments ago, will head back. The sophomore from Bloomington, Indiana. And he gets the shooter's bounce on the first. Here's Antoine Smith Jr., the sharpshooter, to come in for Evansville, the 6'7 senior out of Westerville, Ohio. And as I was saying that, you actually hear Brian Wardle yell, shooter, shooter, as soon as he comes in, they want to recognize where he's at on the floor at all times. Yeah, Smith's a guy who leads the Purple Aces in three-pointers made this year at 26, shooting about 39% as well from behind that three-point line. So definitely one of the focuses for the Bradley defense. Make sure you know where he is at all times, especially around the three-point arc. Yeah, and he's been at least a little bit better as of late as well. 12 of 28 from three in his last six games. And there is Smith. He gives it to me, who gets around to the defender. Takes it back out to Bo, back to Toomey, and I believe he stepped on the sideline, he did. And Evansville, four and 13. 
overall coming into tonight. Bradley at 11 and six. Leons leads the way. He's got six for Bradley, the first six of the game, in fact. As Hannah and Henry battle to keep it alive, they do. Henry had it knocked away, wanted a foul, didn't get it, and then it goes back over to Evansville. Yeah, I really like what you see there from Bradley, though. Connor Hickman comes out with another screen to get a shot in the lane, and it's about three Bradley players with active hands in the middle of the paint. Unselfish pass from Hannah, just unable to get a second chance points there from Bradley, but really like the aggressiveness and hustle. Hannah shows on Strawbridge on the ball screen. There's Coleman on the right wing. They switch on the ball screen. Phobe gets the screen from Toomey. Bounce pass in traffic to Smith. Juggles it and lays it in. Nicely done. Beautiful pass from Phobe. You see Smith just kind of take up some space in the lane there. Keep his footwork. Nice pivot. Able to get the shot fake up and score the easy bucket. See if Bradley come up with an answer. Hannah. Hands to Hickman. Back to Hannah underneath. Can he go up? He had it stripped, and it'll stay with Bradley with eight to shoot. Yeah, it looked like Toomey got his hands on that one as Hannah was getting ready to go up. Like the idea from Connor Hickman to throw the lob. It was in traffic, and Darius Hannah did a good job just getting to this ball. Now Bradley's got eight seconds to work with on this baseline out of bounds. Tavaninen to inbound. Active Still hands once again by yep. Bo, again playing that passing lane. They're going to look at the shot clock here. It was set at eight. And they're going to set it back there from seven for another baseline out of bounds play here. Lob it up for Henry. Grabs it out of the air. Now drives his way in, goes up, and he was hit on the hand. Like Smith got him a little bit on the wrist. Hand area as he was going up, lost possession of the ball, still able to get the shot up. That's just the pure strength of Deshaun Henry fighting through the contact. He's going to go to the line for two, getting their look at it. And Henry continuing to climb up the all-time scoring leaders in program history. Currently 66th all-time. He needs seven and a half points per game to get to 1,000 for his career. And he gets one of two. Six-point lead for the Braves as Coleman to bring it up once again. Tied for a team-high 16 points in the defeat against Illinois State. He'll get the ball screen from Smith. Cut off by Henry. Steps back for three, and that one's well off the mark. Good contested three from the Braves. Yeah, a little bit of a rush shot there from Coleman. The step-back three-pointer, no good. And Coleman's one of those guys who can really heat up in a hurry, but not, unable to get that shot going there. He's going to be a guy the Purple Aces need tonight to be scoring to stay within distance here for Evansville. Yeah, he's averaging just over nine a game in the aggregate, but over 15 per game in the last seven as Hannah skies up and in and throws it down. We saw a lot of that on Saturday against Valparaiso from both Henry and Hannah, and they both have a slam so far tonight. And now Evansville turns it over. And Bradley will have it when we come back. 12 to go here in the first half. Braves with their largest lead of the night so far. It's eight right here on the Valley on ESPN. show the road what we've got snowy streets we're coming for you icy grip we're holding tight wintry mix meh safety's the name of our game yours toyota all-wheel drive sedans every new toyota comes with toyota care our no-cost maintenance plan 
Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. This is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. Country miles with never-ending pride, virtues and values, and colors that run deep. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. Brian Beto and Matt McLean back with you. Bradley out to an eight point lead. I said right at the top of the broadcast, Matt, this was the 61st all time matchup between the programs. And here's a little bit of a breakdown. Bradley leads all time 37 to 23, but the Braves have been real dominant as of late in this series, including winning nine straight. They've won 11 of 12 overall, and then the domination here in Peoria specifically. Evansville hasn't won here since 2016. Um, but again, it's been back and forth over the years, but almost all Bradley exclusively as of late. Yeah, absolutely. Last time Evansville beat Bradley was January 6, 2018. So when you haven't beat a team in five years, some of that is mental, but you know, this is a, a brand new slate for this Evansville program this year under first year uh, head coach David Raglan. He's got these guys playing hard. You know, it's got to be tough when you're coming into a rebuild and you're working on new pieces to get into the program. But a fresh start for Evansville this year and uh, seeing some signs of improvement so far for the Purple Aces. Strong ball movement from the Braves. Montgomery, there's the deflection from Smith. Ten to shoot. Weathers looking to post up Mass. He does. Mass backs his way in. Draws the double out to Weathers, looking for his first three of the year, and he's got it. Yeah, just like they drew it up, right? Get a post touch to Rink Mass, kick it out to your shooter. Well, Bob Weathers hasn't been much of a shooter this year, but he gets that one to go and knocks down the three-pointer. As you mentioned, Brian, his first triple of the season. Smith hands to Coleman. He's got the distance, and he can't answer. Yeah, and that was Smith, too, as well, the 40% three-point shooter, exactly what they wanted. Unable to get it to go, and Bradley with a little bit of momentum here now. Montgomery, the mid-range jumper. Too strong and one and done. And right now, Evansville's limited Bradley to just one offensive rebound. We know the Braves are an elite offensive rebounding team as that three spins out from Smith. Hannah crossing over on Toomey, but he caught, got himself caught up in the air and didn't know what to do with it and turns it over. And after the hot, hot start for Evansville offensively, the opening stages down to just 33% shooting a four of 12 from the field. So they really need to pick it up on that side of the floor. Just nine minutes and change into this ball game and Bradley has Evansville doubled up. And now we talked about Bradley's game on Saturday. Evansville had a lead against Illinois State 60 to 58 with 407 to go and the Redwoods Went on a big run to yeah. ultimately come away with the win. 11 to one run to end the game for ISU. And that's one of those when you're a hungry team and you're searching for a win, you haven't picked one up in the Valley this season, a heartbreaker. You see Toomey, the strong take to the bucket for two. The 6'10 junior out of France. Is at Indian Hills Community College last year. He gets the bucket. And stops the bleeding for the Aces. On the wing, Leon's up top, Tavaninen. Lands who had the first six for the Braves. Finds Dean contested three, doesn't matter. Yeah, really nice pass from Al by Leon's driving baseline, just kind of rises up above the defense. Finds Dean who slots it in for the three ball. His first field goal. Blocking foul called on Montgomery. On the drive by Chris Moncrief, the freshman from Pittsburgh. Yeah, nice recognition there from Moncrief. Seeing the defense kind of shifting a little late to rotate over. Duke Dean tries to get over and help. Moncrief driving the seam, picks up the foul. Rink Mast Great with the steal. anticipation by Mast. Coast to coast, here's Mast. And a whistle and a foul. I didn't hear it at first, but he couldn't quite finish, but it'll be two free throws for Rink Mast. How about the athleticism from Rink Mast? Obviously, earlier in the season, a sideline with a knee injury. The explosiveness looks like it is there, folks, going coast to coast. And Toomey with the foul. Rink Mast going to the free throw line. 
First trip to the line tonight for Mast, an 82% foul shooter. Coming off a 17.9 rebound performance against Valparaiso. Braves doubling up the aces just past the midway point in the first half. Yeah, Bradley five for eight from the free throw line here early on. And, you know, earlier in the week in the Valley Coaches Show teleconference, Brian Wardle said, you know, this team still has some levels that it can continue to get improve on. And you see the mid-range jumper there, Silky from Strawbridge, get that to go and wrapping up that free throw thought. You know, Brian Wardle thinks his team can continue to improve. And that's one of the places that he really wants to see the Braves continue to grow and he needs to see some improvement from the free throw line because they have struggled from the charity stripe this year. Yeah, 67%. Evansville, we talked about that as well, at 64% coming in. Mass to Hickman, who knocks down a three. Really, really simple. Baseline out of bounds play. Connor Hickman inbounds it to Rink Mass. Nobody sticks with the inbounder. Right back to Hickman in the corner. Knocks down the triple and a really nice offensive start here for Connor Hickman, who's really kind of struggled offensively as of late. Up to nine points in the Brazen transition. Good vision from Montgomery. Side step three for Dean. It's good. Yeah, Bradley just got it cooking on the offensive end. The three ball's going down. Duke Dean. Gets that one to go, and Bradley out to a 17-point lead just like that, a blink of an eye, Brian. You said it, Evansville was nip and tuck, playing good basketball early on, and we've talked about the Braves' shooting prowess here at home. We brought up the statistic multiple times with 41% from three here at home, and so far, they've well eclipsed that percentage in a small sample seven of eight from three for the yeah. Braves from deep just outrageous you talk about that 41 percent that they're shooting at Carver Arena and, and you shoot seven of eight from behind the arc I mean it's going to be trouble 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 for your opponent and you know Evansville did stick in the game here early on but you got to give Bradley a lot of credit their defense has really really clamped down and offensively you know what the key we talked about it was kind of control the tempo and Bradley is gotten everything they've wanted in transition. Evansville hasn't really been able to set their defense. We see the transition three there from Dean, and right now everything kind of going Bradley's way. And now they pick up a little of this three-quarter court zone press. See how Evansville responds to this. They find the middle, and Bobe dribbles out of trouble. Coleman back to Bobe. He had a three early in the ball game. And just like that, the shot clock is down to nearly 10. And this 1-3-1 one, one defense has been cost oh, havoc. Oh, what a find <laughs> underneath for Smith. Yeah, and that's exactly how you beat it. Got to get the ball to the middle of a zone. Terrific pass throughout the defense. And get to the flush. Well done there from the Purple Aces and Smith getting the easy bucket. Dean, at this time, Henry, another chance. That one spins off, partially deflected by Smith. And a whistle and a jump ball is going to be called. It'll go back over to Evansville. But first things first, let's head to break. 7.59 to go here in the half. The Braves three-point shooting barrage. Opening it up a 15-point lead here at home. And what if I need help picking a plan? State Farm's here to help. What up, Bob? Okay, guys. What if he's not actually 7'4"? We good? Yeah, we good. Good work today, boys. Oh, it's 11. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. There it is, the largest gig speed network. It's so fast, it's game on for the whole house. Okay, you spent way too much time rehearsing that. The champ here, his gig speeds run on can't catch me Wi-Fi. And these upstairs all-nighters rock Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. We booked a gig? Not that kind of gig. We're talking about Xfinity X5. It puts the gig in gig speed. Bradley University student athletes live their sport, so when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. 
The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. 15-point lead for the Braves over the visiting Evansville Purple Aces, who Matt alluded to it a little bit earlier in, you know, a first year of what they hope is, you know, a strong foundation being built. And we get a look at the first-year head coach, David Raglan, who's been, he's a very experienced Division I coach. Uh, at, you see the, the time at Utah State, also uh, several other schools, including two Valley stints at Valpo and Indiana State. He's, he's an Evansville native. He's brought on two assistants in Craig Snow and, uh, and Marcus Wilson that were part of that 99 title team for, for Evansville. And I, we're not going get into specific recruits, but there's a lot of excitement around some of the guys they could potentially be, be bringing in. And uh, I, I'm sure they're excited to see kind of a year one, kind of that foundation being built and how they can transition that moving forward. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. You see his offense right here coming up and getting a, a nice bucket out of the timeout. And, you know, Coach Raglan, this guy knows all about winning. He was at Butler last year, a really good team on, on staff three years at Utah State. And those guys had at least 20 wins in all three of those seasons. And you kind of mentioned he knows the Midwest. He knows the Valley with a lot of the places that he's been to. So, you know, really good hire and somebody who, you know, Evansville faithful hope can kind of turn this program around. Yeah, and I like how he's he's really kind of embraced the tradition of the times when Without they were doubt. winning. Uh, they wore the sleeves mm -hmm. on Saturday that um, Evansville sort of known for. Um, he said they definitely would be keep wearing it had they won that game on yeah. Saturday, but... Yeah, and one of the things that Coach Ragland said about, you know, bringing those back, you see a nice pass, Hickman, rink mass going down the lane, and the easy lane for Bradley right there. Uh, talking about the sleeves for Evansville, though, is one of the reasons they wanted to bring them back is, you say, you look up at the all the banners that have been hung from Evansville, and what, what do all those teams have in common? At, at some point, they all wore those sleeves, so just really <laughs> cool to kind of bring that history back and, and want to bring, you know, part of that culture back to these guys who are new to the program. The Braves are ready for that one. Let's see what they do offensively. In the corner, here's Leons. High post to Mass. Back to Hickman and another three. Yeah, if you're a Bradley fan, you've got to be super happy. See Connor Hickman coming out and having a really, really nice offensive performance here in the first half. He's got a third of Bradley's points. He's at 12 so far and kind of getting it done, being aggressive and see him knock down the three. Three of four shooting is Leons gets his hand in the passing lane. The Braves steal it away. They lead the Valley in that category. Good position and a mismatch underneath for Henry. Backing his way in. Henry goes up. Henry can't finish. Gets it right back. Other side this time. No whistle somehow. And we'll go the other way with it. And now Coleman has it, spins baseline, cut off by Dean, back up top, Strawbridge from deep, and Dean the rebound. Leon's had the first two threes of the game, this one can't sit down. Yeah, big juncture in the game here for Evansville, five minutes left in the first half. Got to get something going on the offensive end here. Try to claw your way back. Get it within 12, 10 points before the halftime break. Got to get something going offensively. A Good nice backdoor back cut. cut. Zipped in the corner, now on the wing. Bogue for a second triple. That's down. That's exactly Good shot what by they Gage needed. And without a doubt, Brian Wardle wants a quick timeout for it too. Bogue knocks down the three. Maybe get a little bit of momentum. You see Coach Wardle not happy with the officials right now. We're gonna take another look at that sequence underneath from Deshaun Henry. They're fighting down low, no foul called, and then Bob comes on the other end and knocks down the three. You see the, the mismatch, and Henry, you're not gonna keep him off the glass. Rick Mass doing a good job, fighting through the contact, nice shot fake, and you know, we see another look at it, and Smith did get some of the ball, some of the man as well. It was Strawbridge in there too, and Coach Wardle not happy and fighting for his guys. Yeah, I think there were some back there, but uh, in any regards, a good job by Evansville. We talked about capitalizing from 
areas when they turn someone over or get a strip that they didn't maybe feel like they did on Saturday. That time, uh, they get the no whistle, they come down, great ball movement, yeah. Gage Bove, a very effective uh, three-point shooter, is able to knock it down a second three and prompts a timeout from the Braves. And let's see what they do out of the timeout where they typically have a lot of success offensively. No look in the corner, Leons. Backing his way in, goes baseline, draws the double, Hickman quick catch and shoot. One and done, excellent box out underneath by Phillips. Or beg your pardon, that's Moncrief. Weathers gets whistled for a foul. Yeah, good job by Bo, trying to remain aggressive. And that's how the Purple Aces are going to get back into this one. It's a little bit of a discrepancy so far in, in the fouls. Evansville was six. Bradley picks up one right there. But the Coach Ragland's asking, what do you think about that one? <laughs> Gage Bo remaining aggressive. Purple Aces keep the ball. Coleman from beyond the elbow knocks down another. You mentioned he called him silky earlier. And that's Absolutely. Exactly the case. He had 22-point game against Missouri State. I mentioned earlier, 16 against ISU. And just like it, just when it looked like Bradley was going to start to pull away a little bit, I had a 17-point advantage. Evansville, a nice 4-0 run, and they're going to get a stop here momentarily. Malvi Lance fighting for it, but Evansville has some momentum going right here. Looks like Gage Bow maybe rolled an ankle a little bit, Ginger on the far side, but nonetheless, Evansville another opportunity to chip into this Bradley lead. Bogue the senior, right side, Coleman. They got the high-low here, too. Yep. Weathers down low and great help side defense. They're going to get a loose ball. Oh, it looks like it's going up the other way. Bradley's going to have the ball. Yeah, stepped on the baseline, and the Braves will have it when we come back. 3.29 remaining in the half. Braves 37, aces 24 right here on the Valley on ESPN. show the road what we've got snowy streets we're coming for you icy grip we're holding tight wintry mix meh safety's the name of our game yours toyota all-wheel drive sedans every new toyota comes with toyota care our no-cost maintenance plan visit your local toyota dealer today find yours at toyota.com toyota let's go places this is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. Country miles with never-ending pride, virtues and values, and colors that run deep. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. Back here in Peoria on a very mild Wednesday night here in January. We'll take, we'll take these temps 50s any day of the week a doubt. in January. Not going to hear any complaints from me, at least not about that. As you get a look at the Bradley huddle with Ryan Wardle in his eighth year. See the associate head coaches, Mike Barge and Jimmy Foster, Brian Jones, the first year as an assistant as well. Time at Bradley, a uh, chance to get to, to 500. But again, that's skewed. We talked about that foundation year that Evansville's trying to build. Very similar to what right. Bradley had when they had all those freshmen and they felt about building an identity, building a program. And clearly that paid off over the, the last seven plus years, similar to what Evansville's trying to mimic. But you see the two NBC tournament championships, continuity, the identity that this team has built especially on the defensive end. We've talked about their three-point shooting tonight. We haven't even got into some of the defensive metrics that they've excelled at, not only this year, but in, in previous years as well. You see a nice play right there, Darius Hanna! The alley-oop! 
And you see they design it for Hannah out of the timeout. Beautifully executed in the flush from Hannah, his second of the night, back to a 15-point game. And you, you said the exact word right there, execution, coming out of the timeout. Connor Hickman's been red hot, so what do they do? They give him the ball coming off the screen. The defense expects him to be the one shooting, and they throw it up instead to Hannah. You see Evansville with the three-point answer. Yeah, good answer by Smith. After the crowd electrified by that dunk from Hannah, that's the first triple from Smith today. He's got seven for Evansville. Hickman leading the all scores with 12. And now Tavanainen tries to join the three point action. He comes up short. Leons keeps it alive, goes reverse and scores off the glass. So active on the glass, the Bradley Braves and one of the best right there. Malavi Leons keeping the play alive. Second chance opportunity. He's up to eight points now and another quick stop for Bradley. Get it out in transition back in the offensive end. Weathers. In the corner, Hickman driving in, kick, Tavanainen, three, good. Beautiful offense by Bradley once again, finding the open shooter with driving off the baseline. It's Hickman, kicks it out to Tavanainen. Really, really well done by Bradley's offense. His first field goal. Strawbridge, skipped and threw it a little too high intended for Gage Bogue, Mast and Dean back in. And here's one of the things I'm really, really enjoying about Bradley today too as well. They're sharing the ball really well as they have been all season. 10 assists off their 15 makes, so doing a great job distributing the ball, being unselfish. And that was one of the things early in the year Coach Wardle was saying, hey, maybe we should be a little bit more selfish. And, and you know, we need our guys to be shooting, but right now Bradley has been passing up good looks for excellent looks and have been thriving. Underneath Mast. Spins middle and makes it look easy. Yeah, it's really tough. If Wink Mast is going to get those bounces, he's already a dominant one on one post player. And to get a little kiss like that, Rink Mast puts it in. He's up to seven points here right before the end of the half. He's got three rebounds. He's got four assists in this ball game. And that's one of the things Bradley has really improved as well since Rink Mast has returned is that assist to turnover ratio. He does such a great job facilitating. You'll see a lot of times. He might be the biggest man on the court, but he plays a lot of that high post around the three-point arc, and they run the offense through him. It's another rebound. He's 30th in the country in defensive rebound percentage. Look at this ball movement. Not this time, and another terrific rebounder, and Toomey brings it down and quickly up the floor the other way for Evansville. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Toomey's game, and he's got a little bit of one-on-one -on -one in him as well. Nice pass to the cutting Strawbridge, who's going to get that one up off the glass and in. Really well done there by Strawbridge and getting to end the run there for the Purple Aces. Yeah, and the find, a really good sequence from Toomey yeah. in general. He gets the rebound, brings it up the floor, hits his man in stride, and Toomey, who played seven games for Little Rock last year, has really played extremely well for Evansville. Ten points per game, five and a half rebounds per game as well, as Strawbridge converts on the old-fashioned three-point play, and the Braves... We'll be able to hold for the final shot here. Shot clock turned off. Again, it led by as many as 19. That was just shaved by three after that three-point play by Strawbridge. And Dean has it. For a ball screen here, rink mass, maybe something cutting back. Got Hickman off the double screen, off the fade. And steps back. Tipped up, no, and I don't think it would have counted anyway. But an incredible first half by the Braves. They use a mid-half mid -half run to extend this one into double digits. And again, they led by as many as 19. It stands at 16, heading into the locker room. We'll step aside, take a time out. We'll be back with first half stats, first half highlights, and more. Coming up next, you're watching the Valley on ESPN. And what if I want a new car? State Farm's here to help. What if I want a new career? Keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it again, keep bouncing it again, keep bouncing really quick, keep bouncing it again, keep running and bounce it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it again, keep bouncing real quick, feel free to jump in. Keep bouncing again, keep bouncing again. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
I started in 1951 when I was 14 years old. A gentleman by the name of Joe O'Brien told me, he said, I've had planes, I've had motorhomes, I've had big houses, I've had little houses, Wayne. He said, I've had everything that I've ever wanted, but he said, I've never appreciated anything more than a motorcycle. You get on it, you go where you want to go, and you don't have to answer to anybody. Sometimes you can call it work, other times it's just a pleasure to do what you do every day. It begins here. The State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship hits the hardwood at Enterprise Center March 2nd through 5th in St. Louis. Don't miss any of the action as 12 Missouri Valley teams will compete for an automatic NCAA berth for the first time in Arch Madness history. To get your tickets for college basketball's premier conference tournament, visit archmadness.com now. Bradley University student athletes live their sport, so when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. Halftime at Carver Arena, Bradley out to a 16-point lead. This is how they started it, Matt, and they got cooking from the three-point line early, and they really carried it throughout that first half. Yeah, it really was a three-point barrage. You see Evansville got involved with it, too, as well, but Bradley started out the game seven of eight from behind the three-point arc. Now, since then, they've cooled down a little bit, just two for seven, or two for uh, nine, rather, and so kind of regressed to the mean a little bit. Evansville had a couple really nice runs to get back in it. We saw Darius Hanna with a left-handed flush. We also saw him with an alley-oop. And really, Bradley's offense in the first half, what's the story been with Bradley? It's been unselfishness, multiple guys coming in and scoring. You see Pop Weathers getting a three. Connor Hickman leads all scores with 12 points. And Rink Mast has seven at the break as well, too. So Bradley doing a good job getting a lot of guys involved. You've got to give Evansville a lot of credit, though. They shot 48% in the first half, really staying within striking distance most of the half, despite two really big runs from Bradley in that first half, Brian. Yeah, no question about it. And they exercised, uh, I think we decided a 13-4 run uh, that sort of ballooned this lead, which now stands at 16 as you get a look at uh, the first half uh, statistics. And right now, actually, Bradley and Evansville shooting right at 48%, I want to say, overall. And you look at some of the other numbers, and uh, the Braves have shot really well from three. Uh, we have some of the numbers off a little bit. It's actually, it looks a lot better for Bradley than it has on your screen right now. Uh, Matt, if you want to run through some of those, especially when it comes to maybe the rebounds, the, yeah, the lack absolutely. of turnovers, three-point percentage. Yeah, so Evansville doing a really good job actually staying close despite the the discrepancy between the big men, you know, Bradley definitely has the advantage inside in terms of heights. Well, the rebounding battle right now, Bradley has 18 first half rebounds. Evansville just 15. They're doing a really good job. And, you know, Evansville doing a great job limiting the second chance points, too, as well. Bradley is a team that just kind of dominates the offensive boards and is really good at creating second chance opportunities. Right now, Bradley only has two second chance points. So doing a good job there. And, you know, both teams doing a pretty solid job too as well in the paint Bradley with a 14 to 12 advantage there in the paint so a really really even on a lot of different things especially when you look at field goal percentage you know Evansville they're down 16 at halftime but they've shot 48 percent from the field in the first half of action so you know, Bradley that's going to be a space where they think they can improve a little bit Evansville if they come out hit some threes here you know they've only hit four threes in the first half and they're a team that likes to shoot the three so that's how they can kind of get back into this game you know question 48 percent against Quite frankly, the stingiest defense yeah. in, in the Missouri Valley Conference. So we'll see what the second half brings. Individually, we said it earlier, but Connor Hickman leading the way with all scores is the only player in double figures currently with 12. You said it, Matt, it's been a balanced effort. Five different Braves have made a three in that first half. A pretty high total, and they've spread it around offensively as well. Leading the way is Strawbridge uh, with eight for Evansville. We'll step aside. Take a time out. We'll be back. We'll take you around the valley. A couple other games going on. Currently one nearing its conclusion as well. We'll get you caught up on that one as well as Missouri State and Illinois State. That's coming up next right here in the Valley on ESPN. 
Bradley University student athletes live their sport. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. There it is, the largest gig speed network. It's so fast, it's game on for the whole house. Okay, you spent way too much time rehearsing that. The champ here, his gig speeds run on can't catch me Wi-Fi. And these upstairs all-nighters rock Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. We booked a gig? Not that kind of gig. We're talking about Xfinity X5. It puts the gig in gig speed. Dear all-wheel drive, let's show the road what we've got. Snowy streets, we're coming for you. Icy grip, we're holding tight. Wintry mix, meh. Safety's the name of our game. Yours, Toyota all-wheel drive sedans. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. This is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. Country miles with never-ending pride, virtues and values, and colors that run deep. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. 46 to 30. You see the, the amazing Tyler with this balance in there. He can balance that on his, his chin, that ladder that you're seeing right there. <laughs> I'm out of bread just watching it. That was a great, great my, halftime show. My goodness. I'm not sure what's more balanced, that effort, that ladder on his chin to the Braves' balance attack offensively in the first half. There's well a done. great dad joke well for you that I had to pull off. A season uh, vet. <laughs> yeah, season vet, yeah. Three kids that comes with the That's territory. Right. <laughs> uh, but Bradley, again, out to a 16-point lead, Matt. Um, but two other games going on around the Valley. One of pretty heavy significance when it comes to the standings is right now, SIU was down pretty big early, at least in double digits in the first half in Terre Haute. They've closed the gap and as of now have overtaken Indiana State under four minutes to play in that one. That's a, that's a big one to keep an eye on. And yeah. then it's elsewhere, just right down I-74, a little bit east, we have Missouri State, a four-point lead at Illinois State. Yeah, we'll definitely give you updates on those, especially with the Southern Illinois and Indiana State game going final here within the next five, ten minutes. But then, yeah, got a big game down in, in normal as well, too, between ISU and Missouri State. And three good games yesterday, too, in the Valley as well. The, kind of the one that we, we would circle there is the bottom left corner. Drake goes on the road, forces overtime in a game. They really, really struggled and got a very quality road win at UIC coming from behind. And says a lot about Drake's leadership and their veteran presence to not play their best game and still come out with a with a victory. And as well as Northern Iowa and Belmont actually with a road win at Valpo uh, yesterday as well, too. Kind of wrapping up this, this kind of match day of the Valley here in the middle of the week. Yeah, no question. If we get a look at what's coming up next for both sides, we'll start with Evansville. And after tonight, they'll take on Valparaiso as uh, they'll get an opportunity again to get their, their first Valley win of the season if they're not able to come from behind uh, tonight. And then, you know, it doesn't get much easier after that for Evansville uh, going to Carbondale and then hosting Drake and Belmont before wrapping up against, against Valpo, um, you know, to end the, the month of January. But uh, each night, we always look ahead as medium broadcast for each night's a new opportunity, and Evansville's got some upcoming here. Yeah, without a doubt. And you, you look after this second half of Bradley game, three of your next four games will be at home in Evansville. You know, great opportunity coming up against Valparaiso, another team who's kind of been struggling as well. Maybe you can get your mojo going, pick up a victory there. And who knows? There's a lot of the season left to play. We're right now about the 33, the one third percent of the way through of this kind of regular season. And Evansville still has some time to turn this around. The good opportunity here in the second half against Bradley coming up too. On the flip side for the Braves, maybe their most difficult two-game stretch yeah. on paper coming up 
You go on the road against preseason favorite Drake, as Matt just referenced their, their road win last night against UIC. And then, as of now, as it stands right this second, undefeated Indiana State and Terre Haute. And that's an interesting one because that's the only time they play Indiana yep. State. Uh, and also, this is the only time Bradley and Evansville will face each other. They've gone away from every school playing every other school twice due to the, 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 the additions this year. So just one opportunity to get a win against Indiana State. And then, of course, they'll come home against Belmont and Illinois State and finish the month at UIC. We've talked ad nauseum, too, about Bradley here at Carver Arena, 9-0 and this season. But that means away from home, they're 2-6. and six. So a really good opportunity for Bradley to come out and say, hey, you know, we've got Drake and Indiana State, two of the Valley front runners right now. Go out, compete at those games, see if you can kind of turn the season around a little bit on the road, get some momentum going. Just minutes away from the second half of action from Evansville and Bradley. We'll step aside and we'll bring that action to you. That's coming up next. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. And what if I want a new car? State Farm's here to help. What if I want a new career? He bouncing it, he bouncing it, he bouncing it, he bouncing it again, he bouncing it again, he bouncing it really quick, he bouncing it again, he run and bounce it, he bounce it, he bounce it, he bounce it again, he bounce real quick, feel free to jump in. He bounced again, he bounced again. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I started in 1951 when I was 14 years old. A gentleman by the name of Joe O'Brien, he told me, he said, I've had planes, I've had motorhomes, I've had big houses, I've had little houses, Wayne. He said, I've had everything that I've ever wanted, but he said, I've never appreciated anything more than a motorcycle. You get on it, you go where you want to go, and you don't have to answer to anybody. Sometimes you can call it work, other times it's just a pleasure to do what you do every day. It begins here. The State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship hits the hardwood at Enterprise Center March 2nd through 5th in St. Louis. Don't miss any of the action as 12 Missouri Valley teams will compete for an automatic NCAA berth for the first time in Arch Madness history. To get your tickets for college basketball's premier conference tournament, visit archmadness.com now. Bradley University student athletes live their sport, so when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. Just about ready to get rolling here in half number two between Bradley and Evansville. And a good crowd here at Carver Arena on a Wednesday night. Wednesday night in the Valley for you with the Braves out to a 16-point lead. And again, we've said it multiple times, Matt, but the Braves searching for their 17th consecutive win here at home. They haven't lost at Carver in over a calendar year. Uh, a win tonight actually would push them within within two wins of their eighth longest home winning streak uh, of all time. You see the last home loss that came out of last second uh, do, we, do we need to talk about Missouri Isaiah Mosley's uh, Mosley is fadeaway three? Yeah, that was a heartbreaker. And if it wasn't for that, it would be much longer, longer. streak. Yeah. yeah, no question. And again, going into tonight, 10th, but they would tie Dayton as well with a win. And then on the flip side, we said it earlier, Alabama's actually got a eight point lead at Arkansas, who's actually in that top 10. Listen, I get it, they don't give out rings for home winning streaks, <laughs> and but we've talked about it a lot. But at the same time, it, it just shows that how much they've made this arena such a home court advantage and such a difficult place for opponents to come in and win at. Yeah, it's an it's been an absolute fortress, especially the last, you know, four or five years under Brian Wardle. And, you know, you talk about 
a big winning streak at home, it hasn't just been winning. It's been dominating. That average margin of victory during the 16-game winning streak has been 26 points. So Bradley has really just kind of dominated. And, you know, looking at tonight's game, got to give Evansville a lot of credit that they've kept within distance a lot of times. But Bradley have had a couple nice runs to kind of make this a 16-point game at halftime when, in reality, it, it was, you know, for maybe 16 to 20 minutes, Evansville was right there with the Braves. So, you know, we got another 20 minutes here for Evansville to fight their way back into this one. But a, a lot of the time of this game has been spent Bradley in the lead and trying to work their way towards the 17th consecutive win here at Carver Arena. So the Braves will open the half with possession. Looks like the same starters for both sides. Let's see what they draw up to begin the half. Low block looking for Mast and said Leons goes baseline. Look at that length. And he's so good at that on the reverse and he gets it to go. Man, it's like every game out by Leons is a reverse layup. I'm like, his length, my goodness, how he's able to get under the hoop and back to the other side. But Leons has made an absolute killing out of buckets just like that gets another one to go so the Braves nearing 50 percent from the floor and Matt we've talked about the identical shooting percentage but Bradley's still with the 16 point lead yeah the three point percentage is part of it but also just extra shots extra for possessions sure. the Braves have done a great job taking care of the basketball just three first half turnovers and limiting second chance opportunities, but Evans will able to get one on this trip. Yeah, Strawbridge keeps that play alive. You see some nice hands from Malvi Leons. Strawbridge unable to regain possession. It's off his hand going back to the Braves. And that was one of the things in the first half. Both teams kind of did a pretty good job of taking care in the basketball. I know Bradley just had the three turnovers. That's the 10th now for Evansville. It's going to be a key for them if they want to fight their way back into this one, taking care of the basketball and limiting those turnovers. Corner. Montgomery and there is Toomey with his seventh rebound turnaround jumper is short and Leons grabs that one out of the air that's his third carom to go along with 10 points Montgomery baseline had a step, had it poked away, and a late whistle and a foul is going to go on Marvin Coleman. Yeah, they're going to get that one on the floor as well, too. So Bradley had the ball baseline out of bounds, but really like the idea there from Zeke Montgomery. Last time down the floor, misses the three. So right there, shot fake, get past his man. Not able to get the shot off, but Bradley keeps possession. Safety valve out to Dean. Deep three. And another rebound from Toomey. He has eighth of the game now. Really like what he does on both sides of the floor. Always available, keeping plays alive. And, you know, going to need something from here offensively here in the second half as well, too, for the Purple Aces. Coleman, who's got seven. Phillips, cut off by Mass. Bo puts it on the floor behind the back. Now just four to shoot. Coleman's got to go. Drives in, had it wrestled away, but they're going to give get Hickman on the foul first. Yeah, Hickman did a really good job attacking the basketball there. He got his hands on it. Also got the, the got the man with the ball with his body to see a little hip check here on the drive. I'm going to get Evansville a reset shot clock and 20 seconds to work here. Hit on the hand is Strawbridge. Yeah, Montgomery late to rotate out to the ball off the inbounds. Strawbridge going to go back to the free throw line. He had some success there in the first half. Second foul on Montgomery. Nobody else has more than one for the Braves. Coleman and Strawbridge, or beg your pardon, Phillips. Coleman and Phillips both have two. Yeah, Strawbridge misses the first. And Strawbridge is one of those guys, too, a volume shooter, and Bradley's done a pretty good job on him so far through the game, just seven field goal attempts. But, you know, Strawbridge, one of those guys, he has seven games this season where he's had at least 20 points. And, you know, in a lot of those games, he's attempted at least 12 shots of 15 of the 17 games this season. Connor Hickman takes that one to the hoop completely untested there, Brian. Yeah, and Strawbridge now with nine points tonight, has scored at least eight in 17 of yeah. 18 contests. 
Whistle. Uh, that's going to go on Bradley. So they've called it pretty tight so far in the opening two and a half minutes. It's the second on Hickman. Coleman to inbound. I like the yellow kicks. You got some good options right there, including Strawbridge. I like those as well. Blocked Kick out to the corner. Leon's and and he play. threw it off to me. And that's going to turn it back over to Bradley, I believe. That's what it looked like, but the ball's staying on this end of the floor regardless. What a play. Oh, he must have come down out of bounds before he got it away. Look at this. A heads-up play. And Leons catches that after a block and throws it off of Evansville. And we're going to get an offensive foul here against Phillips now going back Bradley's way. And Leons, who actually leads the Valley in shot blocking. Adds one to his total there. Yeah, Leon's now up to 28 blocks this season. As you mentioned, leads the Valley. And right behind him is his good buddy Darius Hanna with 22 coming into the game. They actually are one and two in block shots in the Valley. And you know, just one part of Bradley's defensive cog is their ability to Block the shots, and those two guys are really at the forefront. Rink Mast, excellent in that as well. Leons rips it away from Coleman. Montgomery underneath. Great closeout by Strawbridge to get there. Otherwise, that would have been an easy two for the Braves underneath. Still 14 to shoot. It was 46 to 30 at halftime if you're just joining us. So just a 4-1 advantage for the Braves here in the second half. Pick and roll to Mast. And I don't think he fully had it and was just too strong going up. Yeah, worked that to perfection. Connor Hickman saw two guys, went with him with the ball. Gets it to Mast, not able to get it to go. And you see Toomey missing the bunny down on the other end. Both teams unable to convert opportunities they would usually knock down. Henry in for the Braves. His first action of the second half. Quick give back to Dean. Goes right side of the lane. Hands back to Hickman. Stumbles. And Dean posting up Henry. Getting his hand in the passing lane is Coleman. In transition, Coleman peels out. Toomey sizing it up. Phillips calls him away. Low block. Strawbridge looking to use that size to his advantage. And Leon's read it the whole way. Not only does he get the block shot, he also saves it, sending Bradley the other way. And now the opportunity to drive baseline as well. But Toomey's going to get called for the hands right there. Malavai Leon's getting it done on both ends of the floor. It's a cliche, but it has been a block party here in the second half from Alibi Leons as the Braves have slightly extended their lead back up to 19, matching their largest of the evening. We'll step aside, take a timeout. Bradley basketball out of the timeout when we come back on the Valley on ESPN. Bradley University student athletes live their sport. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. There it is, the largest gig speed network. It's so fast, it's game on for the whole house. Okay, you spent way too much time rehearsing that. The champ here, his gig speeds run on can't catch me Wi-Fi. And these upstairs all-nighters rock Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. We booked a gig? Not that kind of gig. We're talking about Xfinity X5. It puts the gig in gig speed. Dear all-wheel drive, let's show the road what we've got. Snowy streets, we're coming for you. Icy grip, we're holding tight. Wintry mix, meh. Safety's the name of our game. 
yours. Toyota all-wheel drive sedans. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. This is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. Country miles with never-ending pride, virtues and values, and colors that run deep. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. Back here in Peoria and the Arch Madness app is the official app of the 2023 State Barn NBC Men's Basketball Tournament. The app has all the information you need to plan your trip to St. Louis, including the tournament schedule, tickets, hotel accommodations, and special events during Arch Madness. Log on to archmadness.com or download the Arch Madness app on your Android or iOS device now. Back on the resumption of play, Bradley out of the timeout, isolates for Henry and he'll shoot two. Yeah, did a great job there for the recognition. Understanding Henry's got a little bit of a mismatch with Strawbridge on him, so he just kind of backs him down, backs him down. Henry did a good job getting the free throw line. We do have a final in from Terre Haute and Matt, uh, first loss of the season for the Sycamores here in the Valley, a, a huge road win for SIU. 69-61 at Indiana State. And, and a game that Indiana State led by double digits in the first half. You're thinking, oh, they're going to continue that, that dominance and give all the credit in the world to the Salukis who come back and get the big road win. Without a doubt, you mentioned that double digit lead, Brian. Indiana State was up by 10 at halftime. Yeah. Give the Salukis a ton of credit. They win the second half 43-25, to outscoring the Sycamores by 18 that second half. Lance Jones, 18 points, Southern a big win over Indiana State. And I get it's a little too early to be standings watching, but with the win, Bradley would get within uh, a one, a one game of, of first place Indiana State, who will still hold that honor. A bunch of two lost teams in the Valley, but Indiana State with their first blemish of the season. And yeah, now you're playing so many games in the Valley season. You got, right. you got 20 games, and you know, whoever ends up winning this thing is gonna have four, five, six losses, so there's gonna be a lot of parity throughout this season. And a lot of games left for everybody in the league to kind of turn their seasons around or keep going the way that they're going. Great touch by Rink Mass, using the glass to perfection. He gets it to go. Mass now with seven, nine points, rather, to go along with six boards and four assists. Yeah, that's what Bradley SID and former Bradley uh, men's basketball manager Cody Roskins alludes to as the old man game right there. Rink Mass on the post, working that little silky mid-range bank-in shot right there, the fallaway jumper from Mass. Give our guy Cody a shout-out. As Tavaninen will come in for Hickman. Yeah, Mass now four of seven from the floor. Very efficient night once again from the big man from the Netherlands. Uh-oh, here's a chance for Henry. Here comes a flush. Yeah, just too Second simple of the game. there. Too simple there, Brian. Throw, throw it right into the backcourt. Nobody even goes to the ball. Deshaun Henry says, hey, I know what to do with that. Takes it to the other end. Throws it down with two. Right side of the lane for Smith and a whistle and a foul. Henry didn't like it. And Hannah will come in for Mast. Coleman to inbound. Here we go for Strawbridge popping up is Coleman. Avanon and sliding his feet to cut off Coleman. Now 10 to shoot. Here comes the ball screen. Coleman goes opposite, knifes his way through traffic, loses it, and the Braves run in transition. Look out, Hannah. Here's Dean. There's Hannah. Oh! There's the slam. Nobody picks up Hannah right through the middle of the lane. And look out, Sports Center. There's your top 10 moment of the night. Hannah's pumped up coming out 
getting up on Moncrief as well. He smells another one. Deshaun Henry's got a couple flushes. Hannah's got three. Bradley kind of doing it all. Another opportunity oh, here, but they get a foul. foul on Henry for the reach in. Duke Dean was going to give us something on the other end, it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> and we know Duke Dean can, can get up there, too, though. We saw it in the red white scrimmage mm -hmm. up at Renaissance Coliseum, but he can't do anything like this. Bradley getting the ball on the fast break. Duke Dean running it. Get the three on two right through the middle. Darius Hanna with the eyes, <laughs> even with the rim. He could have kissed the rim there, Brian Beto. And there's the turnover. As the Braves have stretched this to a 27 point lead. 13.46 to go. Evansville, who we talked about their shooting the ball well, relatively speaking, against Bradley in the first half. They, they were without a field goal right now so far here in the second half. Curling is in. Uh oh! 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 <laughs> they can't stop him, folks. Darius Hanna, his fourth dunk of the game. Strawbridge the other way, fades and gets it to go. Good answer on the high arcing shot by Strawbridge. That was a beautiful jumper by Strawbridge, the fall away, and it ends a really big run there from Bradley. My goodness, you think about what they've done here in the second half. It's been a 14 to three run here to open up the second half for Bradley, and Henry looking to add on to it, draws the foul, he's gonna go to the free throw line. And again, that was the first field goal of the half for Evansville, they have just three points, all coming from Strawbridge. He had a free throw earlier in the half, and Evansville, who shot 48% in the first half, they're down to 41% for the ball game. Bradley now shooting at 52% for the floor. This is their 11th, 12th trips to the line tonight, as Weathers and Montgomery will check in for Dean and Leons. So a very effective effort, not only 52% from the floor, but that's inclusive of 18 three-point attempts yeah. where they're 50%. And I won't get into the specific details of how to measure necessarily effective field goal percentage. It's basically an offensive efficiency number, and Bradley is 20th in the country in effective field goal percentage. Uh, and they've, I'm guessing they've improved that tonight with their effort so far. Yeah, I mean, you couple that with their defensive tenacity as well, too, and the, they just absolutely dominate on the the defensive side of the end, lead the Valley in scoring defense at under 60 points per game. Opponents field goal percentage at 38%. The rebound ma margin, they win that by an average of four rebounds a game. And oh, and by the way, they also lead the conference in steals. You see jo Sean Henry getting back involved, sticking with it. And he, the resilience again from Henry. This time it pays off, doesn't get the foul because he doesn't need to because he's able to lay it in. Yeah, we talked about it at halftime, too. Evansville doing a good job of limiting the second-chance opportunities right there. But now, Deshaun Henry kind of getting Bradley's second opportunity there and putting it up and in. Yeah, Henry now in double figures with 10. He's got three rebounds. Here's Moncrief. Fades away, left it short, and Weathers. Quickly the other way, Weathers, Montgomery, a three. Chase down, good hustle by Strawbridge. Coleman the other way, finds Bobe. They zip it opposite corner, three for Smith is no good. And Montgomery pulls it down and the Braves will pull it out. Really admire the pace of, of play offensively that Bradley has been playing tonight. Really pushing the ball into the half court early. We see him get out and transition with some of these dunks. The threes have been going in, and when that happens, it makes it really, really entertaining for this Carver Arena faithful as he pop Weathers in the mid-range, but Henry once again keeping it alive. Third chance. And this time it's good, it's the charm. <laughs> Uh, the Energizer Bunny, Deshaun Henry. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. And third time's a charm, right, Brian? Absolutely. And then off the dribble, that one in and out. Uh, Strawbridge couldn't connect. And once again, the Braves will bring it up. Yeah, this is a 19 to three run here for Bradley. This first nine minutes and change here in the second half and really just pulling it away. 
you know, the defense, they hang their hat on that. It's been the catalyst, but offensively, absolutely tremendous. Evansville out in the break. Great tra and, uh, anticipation by Strawbridge, but they lead Moncrief just a little too far. And that'll send us to a timeout. Bradley, who led by 16 at the break, has doubled that here in the second half. As Matt mentioned, on a 19-3 run here on the Valley on ESPN. And what if I want a new car? State Farm's here to help. What if I want a new career? Keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it again, keep bouncing it again. He bounced it really quick, he bounced it again. He ran and bounced it. He bounced it, he bounced it, he bounced it again. He bounced real quick. Feel free to jump in. He bounced again, he bounced again. At State Farm, again. we're there for your what ifs. Again. Get a quote he today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I started in 1951 when I was 14 years old. A gentleman by the name of Joe O'Brien told me, he said, I've had planes, I've had motorhomes, I've had big houses, I've had little houses, Wayne, he said, I've had everything that I've ever wanted, but he said, I've never appreciated anything more than a motorcycle. You get on it, you go where you want to go, and you don't have to answer to anybody. Sometimes you can call it work, other times it's just a pleasure to do what you do every day. It begins here. The State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship hits the hardwood at Enterprise Center March 2nd through 5th in St. Louis. Don't miss any of the action as 12 Missouri Valley teams will compete for an automatic NCAA berth for the first time in Arch Madness history. To get your tickets for college basketball's premier conference tournament, visit archmadness.com now. Bradley University student athletes live their sport. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. Sixty-five to thirty-three the score and that it's been a loud second half of the break. Yeah, without a doubt. It got going in the first half with a couple of flushes from Henry and Hannah. But the second half, Brian, as you mentioned, it's just been absolutely electric. And Ali you jammed a Darius Santa. How about this one? Throw in the backcourt. Sean Henry says, I'll go get it. And to outdo that, how about this? Duke Dean gets the ball in the front court. Leave it off for Hannah with a one-handed flush. Hannah with another big dunk after that as well. Six dunks by those two guys combined. You talk about efficiency, Darius Hannah's four for four with four dunks. He saw three of them right there, and Bradley coming out of that timeout. Another quick bucket getting Zeke Montgomery involved. Yeah, very well designed and perfectly executed. The Braves get the deuce. And let's see what Evansville does in their first possession after the timeout. That one goes to Coleman, and this time Hickman with the rebound, his first of the night. And he'll get the ball screen from Mast. Leons, high flash for Mast. Fading is Hickman. Splits a pair of defenders and had it blocked by Moncrief. Nicely done. Yeah, really well done by Moncrief. Initially getting beat, Connor Hickman driving that seam. After the shot fake, looked like he was gonna go for the three. That's what was with the game plan. Evansville says, yeah, that's all right. Moncrief comes from behind. Get a look at it right here. Nice block shot. Yeah, Moncrief, the freshman from Pittsburgh, was the 178th rated recruit in the country last year, according to Prep Hoops. And you saw the flash there. Montgomery tried to shovel it to Leons. It was deflected by Moncrief. It looks like it's going to stay with Bradley, but just one on the shot clock. Yeah, nice idea there from Zeke Montgomery. Had he been aware of the shot clock, probably would have just shot a little mid-range six-footer there. Nonetheless, just one second to shoot here for Bradley, and Mass does get it off. And chased down by Montgomery, and he'll shoot too. Terrific effort there, Zeke Montgomery. Understanding what's going on. Mass got the quick shot. Montgomery realizes, all right, I need to get in there and create another opportunity. Just wasn't blocked out. See right there, Moncrief, just a mental lapse. Montgomery able to slip past him, and Zeke Montgomery going to the free throw line. 
That's his team leading seventh rebound of the night. Two points for Montgomery. He came in having scoring double figures in three of his last five. And leads the team in three-point shooting percentage as well. You see him miss the second free throw as well. But Zeke Montgomery, you know, missed a couple of games with a hand injury earlier in the season. But nonetheless, coming into this game, Bradley's leading three-point shooter 50% from behind the arc. And so he's done a really, really good job making that jump, the sophomore jump, I guess you could say. A lot of the time they talk about the sophomore slump, slump but right? <laughs> it's been the exact opposite for Zeke Montgomery. And that seven rebounds is a new career high. Previous was against Evansville almost a year ago to the day when he had five against the Aces. And Evansville still stuck on one field goal here in the half. Skip pass to Leons. That one contested well by the 6'10 Toomey. And Leon's one of those guys, too, shoots a really, really high clip from behind the three-point arc at 39%. Already knocked down a couple of threes in this ball game, but it's a little bit of a misfire on that one in Evansville with an opportunity here on the other end. They switch back, and now Hickman's on Toomey. Toomey's going to back his way in. He'll spin baseline and contact on his way up, and two free throws upcoming for Yassine Toomey. Just 57% at the line this year. This will be his first trip to the stripe. Evansville has shot just six free throws, five from Strawbridge. And we've talked a lot in this second half about Bradley's offense, and rightfully so, winning this second half 21 to four at the moment. But, you know, really on the defensive end is where Bradley has been getting done. Uh, just tremendous defensive prowess right now. Evansville's one for 12 from the field here in the second half. Just shooting 8%, Brian. 0 for three from three. And, you know, if it wasn't for a couple of free throws here and there, they'd, they'd be have just two points in this second half. So Bradley's defense really, really took it personal at the halftime break. We mentioned, you know, Brian Wardle may be a little unpleased with Evansville shooting 48% from the field where the second half defensive end of the floor has been absolutely dynamite for the Braves. Montgomery. There's a three. You mentioned his team leading three-point percentage, and he knocks one down there, his first triple of the night. He's got five. But back to your earlier point, yeah, this more speaks to the Braves, 13th in the nation in two-point percentage defense. And they've been, they've absolutely stymied the aces here in the second half. Under eight to play. Again, doubling up Evansville. Active Leons, hands, Leons, yeah. once again. He's, he's, he's upset with himself on that. Ooh, almost, got, almost got that one, but nonetheless goes out of bounds. Time out on the floor. We'll take it with him. 7.52 to go. All Bradley here tonight, especially in the second half here in Peoria on the Valley on ESPN. Bradley University student athletes live their sport. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. There it is, the largest gig speed network. It's so fast, it's game on for the whole house. Okay, you spent way too much time rehearsing that. The champ here, his gig speeds run on can't catch me Wi-Fi. And these upstairs all-nighters rock Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. We booked a gig? Not that kind of gig. We're talking about Xfinity X5. It puts the gig in gig speed. Dear all-wheel drive, let's show the road what we've got. Snowy streets, we're coming for you. Icy grip, we're holding tight. Wintry mix, Meh. Safety's the name of our game. Yours. Toyota all-wheel drive sedans. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. This is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. 
Country miles with never-ending pride. Virtues and values and colors that run deep. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. Brian Vito and Matt McLean back with you. 70 to 35 is the score. The Braves have really opened it up here in the second half when they led by 16 at the end of the first half. We talked a little bit around the valley, and Matt, you know, more than anyone, how big of a, a metrics and ratings guy I am. And here's a look at the Ken Palm ratings going into tonight. And even though Indiana State, this is before Indiana State's loss, too. That one's sent away by Hannah. Nicely done. But to the point earlier is that this is before Indiana State's loss tonight. Bradley was still the highest rated Ken Palm team coming back to some of the efficiency numbers they'd put up as Dean finger rolls one off the glass and in. Terrific acceleration there from Duke Dean getting around the corner on the left side. Scoops it up with the right hand. Beautiful finish. Coleman has one in and out. And Montgomery runs it down. Yeah, Brian, you're uh -oh, talking about. Oh, here's oh. Hannah again this uh -oh. time. This lays it in. He, he had the golden opportunity. Five for five, five dunks. You know, I just lay this one up off the glass. <laughs> Strawbridge slipping that nice one is passing. Toomey. Great pass on the interior. Coleman goes right back and blocked by Leon. Yeah, Malvi Leon's been all over the place on the defensive end here in the second half with three blocks, a steal, kind of getting everything done on the defensive end for the Braves. Dean connects on a three. Yeah, and just everything is going Bradley's way here in the second half offensively. Duke Dean knocking down the three. And he has just been an absolute stalwart for the Braves offensively this season. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, leads them and made threes. He's shooting it from 37% from behind the arc. And he was our player of the game to watch. And, you know, really kind of had a quiet night, but still 11 points and running the offense well and been really, really involved and in kind of just facilitating the offense. Got three assists tonight as well and only one turnover, kind of improving what we talked about at the top of the show and him really running the offense as well. Time out on the floor, 6.06 remaining in this one. Bradley looking to wrap up their 17th consecutive home win. They're up big here in Peoria. And what if I want a new car? State Farm's here to help. What if I want a new career? Keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it, keep bouncing it again, keep bouncing it again, keep bouncing really quick, keep bouncing it again, keep running, bouncing, keep bouncing. He bounced it. He bounced again. He bounced real quick. Feel free to jump in. He bounced again. He bounced again. At State Farm, again. we're there for your what ifs. Again. Get a quote today. Again. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I started in 1951 when I was 14 years old. A gentleman by the name of Joe O'Brien told me, he said, I've had planes, I've had motorhomes, I've had big houses, I've had little houses. Wayne, he said, I've had everything that I've ever wanted, but he said, I've never appreciate anything more than a motorcycle. You get on it, you go where you want to go, and you don't have to answer to anybody. Sometimes you can call it work, other times it's just a pleasure to do what you do every day. It begins here. The State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship hits the hardwood at Enterprise Center March 2nd through 5th in St. Louis. Don't miss any of the action as 12 Missouri Valley teams will compete for an automatic NCAA berth for the first time in Arch Madness history. To get your tickets for college basketball's premier conference tournament, visit archmadness.com now. Bradley University student athletes live their sport, so when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. 
6.06 remaining, get a look at, at Evansville. Again, Matt, still searching for that, that first Valley win. We talk about uh, sort of a transition year, trying to, to build a foundation. 10 newcomers for this Evansville team, and they've just experienced, you know, obviously, as you might suspect in the first year of regime, some, some growing, growing pains for a team that didn't win a lot last year. And, and you see some of those metrics right here, uh, both their last wins at, at Carver, their last MVC win as well. Yeah, well, we saw flashes from the Purple Aces tonight, no without a doubt. First half, very, very competitive, but really the second half, Bradley is just kind of dominated. And, you know, a lot of that might have to do with depth as well, too. Evansville yep. missing two, two players who are big time players in their rotation. You see Rink Mass get the bucket, but. You know, Evansville without two players tonight, only had seven players in their rotation for the majority of the evening. So uh, after a while, that depth kind of really caught up with them. Yeah, those two, Sekou Calais, and then a freshman they're really excited about, and Gabe Spinelli, and whose father had been a D1 coach for several schools, is Montgomery's got an uncontested dunk. Gets involved in the block party, the slam party. Zeke Montgomery rises up the one-handed flush. So it's no Spinelli, so it's limited Evansville to just seven like it did on Saturday. And then on the other end, we haven't mentioned yet, but Christian Davis out tonight for the Braves. Just rolled his ankle uh, this week and just unavailable to, to play tonight. But uh, one of the strengths for Bradley this year has been their depth, and again, it's been on display again tonight. Mass trying to get to the three-point party, and why not? Yeah, Rink Mass, his first three-pointer of the game, and, and he shoots it well from behind the arc as well. Rink Mass, 32% from behind the three-point arc coming into this game. is going to add in on that. And what I've really liked from Bradley here, his last three possessions, see Zeke Ooh. Montgomery kicks it ahead, looking for Hannah. Montgomery comes crashing into the scores table here. Going to earn a well-deserved round of applause. Yeah, and then we're going to see some substitution as the Braves start to, to empty the bench here. And you're going to see the first action of the night from Hamet Jonovic, who the 7-1 transfer from Serbia, who we saw knock down his first Bradley field goal the other day against Valparaiso. Yeah, Jonovic coming over right there. Great help side defense, realizing and here comes Coleman down the lane. And Janovic blocks him off there, forces the shot clock violation. The man they call Meta coming over and getting a big stop. The seven foot one mm. former U19 Serbian national team member sets the screen right there for Pop Weathers as well. Looking for Janovic on the low block. Smith on him. Janovic backing his way in. And a whistle and a foul is going to be called, and that will send. Jonovic to the line for one in the bonus. But we'll keep you in suspense first because we got to head the timeout. 3.56 to go. And Jonovic heading to the line after this on the Valley on ESPN. Bradley University student athletes live their sport. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists focused and ready to get them back in action. The sports medicine doctors at OSF Healthcare, in partnership with Great Plains Orthopedics, are specially trained to restore function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare and Great Plains Orthopedics are proud to be the official sports medicine providers for Bradley Athletics. There it is, the largest gig speed network. It's so fast, it's game on for the whole house. Okay, you spent way too much time rehearsing that. The champ here, his gig speeds run on can't catch me Wi-Fi. And these upstairs all-nighters rock Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. We booked a gig? Not that kind of gig. We're talking about Xfinity X5. It puts the gig in gig speed. Dear all-wheel drive, let's show the road what we've got. Snowy streets, we're coming for you. Icy grip, we're holding tight. Wintry mix, meh. Safety's the name of our game. Yours, Toyota all-wheel drive sedans. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at toyota.com. 
Toyota. Let's go places. This is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. Country miles with never-ending pride, virtues and values, and colors that run deep. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. Through it all, tonight's player of the game is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, and it's the sophomore, Connor Hickman. Yeah, Connor Hickman had 12 points in the first half, really got the Bradley offense going, and great job of him kind of getting off the schneid a little bit, working his offensive game, driving to the hoop, knocking down some three-pointers. Connor Hickman, tonight's player of the game. On that Jonovic has one bounce out. You see the number 32, no name. He's going to transition to the number four. That'll be his, his permanent jersey. And, Brent, I, I kind of want to take the opportunity to talk about how unique it is a player joining a program in the middle of the season. You know, the situation with Bradley, you see Connor Hickman the steal and then a quick foul from Evansville. You know, the opportunity arises. Bradley opens up a scholarship. Maxi Cano decides he's going to transfer midseason. So scholarship opens up, and so what does Bradley do? That They decide they need to address a need, try to find a big man. Where can you find a big man? How about you go overseas and, right. and find, find a 19-year-old kid? And, you know, Meta is one of those guys who was really well-regarded in, in a lot of the European scouts' minds. And, you know, Brian Wardle kind of heard about this guy, talked to some of his European connections, and sent his assistant coach Brian Jones over to check him out, and everything looked good. And, you know, one of the things they were really impressed with was how well, you know, uh, Jonovic runs the floor for right. being seven foot one, 260 ish pounds, and he's got really soft hands. And he's been playing against a lot of professionals over in Europe. So, the guy with that type of skill set, it was kind of a no brainer. And then he joins in the middle of the season, and he's played in three games already. I mean, it, it's been kind of a crazy whirlwind for him, I'm sure. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, you would have told him probably, what, a, even a month ago right. that this is a possibility. And now he's seeing action, and he's got one, and he's looking for Tavanine and sets the screen for him. Back to Jonovic, who lays it off the glass and in. And the crowd absolutely loves it here in Peoria. Yeah, the Finland-Serbian connection right there between Tavanine and Jonovic. A beautiful roll. Tavanine puts it on the money off of the pick and roll, and really well done one-two play right there. Phillips thinks about a three, glides in, goes up, scores, and the foul. Preston Phillips. The sophomore from Elkhart, Indiana, trying to convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. We got Connor Linky, Gonar Ballou, and Kid Harkey checking in for the Braves. As Bob will come in as well for Evansville. And just a little bit easty here, Illinois State has gone on top of Missouri State. Missouri State, who's actually been on quite a run ever since Bradley had a big win there in, in Springfield, but 52-49. That about that seven score? minutes to go yeah. over there at SFQ Arena. So I'll keep you updated and anything happens on that one. But I'd be one of those. Hey, get done watching the Bradley Evansville game here with us on ESPN Plus. Over and check out the end of the ISU Missouri State game. Jonovic comes up short. And it'll stay with Bradley five on the shot clock. Brian, I want to circle back to something we were talking about coming back from one of our breaks too with, with the Ken Palm and, and how well Bradley rates in that too. And that's one of those metrics that you kind of look at. Also the NCAA evaluation tool that they're throwing up to Jonovic. He's got to shoot it. And oh, he how gets about it to that? go. There's the baby hook. Silky smooth by Meta. And Bradley, going back to kind of the rankings talk, and, you know, they're also the top team in Missouri Valley Conference in terms of the net ranking. You know, they're at 72 there. Their RPI is, you know, probably the highest it's been in almost a decade, I'm sure. They're really, really high in the strength schedule as well, too, about the 120 range, too. So Bradley putting everything kind of together at this point in the season. You know, they can start going on a little bit of a run here, have some momentum, and maybe compete for a Valley Championship. 
This game's certainly not going to hurt them in any of those statistical Absolutely categories not. either. As Weathers gets a step and flips it up and in. Awesome explosiveness right there from Pop Weathers. Saw him make his first three-pointer of the season earlier in the game, and there gets the nice bucket to get up to five points. Strawbridge is fouled and has it spin out. It's going to be a two-shot foul. And Sam Hennessy's set the check-in for the Braves as well. And with Strawbridge, who again has reached double figures, he's got 12 now. Four of six from the line, three rebounds. As the Braves came in, ranked first, allowing just a shade under 60 points per game. That's going to lower after tonight's performance. And 38% in field goal percentage defense. And right now, Evansville at 33% for the ball game. Again, if, you, if you're just joining us, they were at 48% in halftime. So just been a stifling effort defensively from Bradley. Yeah, absolutely. Evansville shooting just 15% from the field here in the second half. Three of 20 from the field. And Cade Harkey throws one up. Not gonna go in, looking for the three-pointer, but Bradley's defense has been absolutely stifling. You see right there, Evansville able to get the bucket, just their fourth field goal here of the second half. That's Moncrief, you see his explosiveness, the, the freshman, and now thrown away by Hardkey. And potentially the last Offensive possession for, for both sides as Coleman will bring it up. And he gets by hard key. And it's foul. And you look at what's ahead for both of these teams. Uh, two really good opportunities for Evansville. We're talking about the struggles, 0 for 7 here in the Valley. A really good opportunity. You get to play Valparaiso also 0 and 7 at home coming up. And a good chance to go out and get your first conference win of the season. And then for Bradley, you talk about that big road test that's coming up. You got two of them coming up back to back, but it all starts coming up Saturday in Des Moines against Drake. Yeah, yeah that'll be a, such a fun one. And Drake coming off an overtime win on the road. Bradley with a, another dominating home performance and looking forward to, to catching that one on Saturday night. Shot clock is off and Hardkey will walk it up. And the Braves will run it out. And this very engaged crowd on a Wednesday night got to see quite a treat from the home team. An, an outstanding performance by Bradley, who extends that home winning streak to 17 games. Now tied for seventh in the country after Arkansas lost earlier tonight as well. The Braves lead from start to finish in this ball game. They never relinquished a lead, led by 16 at halftime. It ballooned up over 50, and we get a final here as the Braves win once again here at home. And Matt, just to, to quickly kind of to wrap things yeah. up, just we talked about offensively in the first half, some loud dunks in the second half from the Braves. We get a look at some of the final numbers. But the second half, just smothering defensive effort from Bradley, and that really helped them put this one away early on in that second half. Yeah, without a doubt, holding Evansville to 19% shooting from the floor in the second half, and that was really the difference. But I want to talk about a couple of stats that really go on in the background here. You see the 19 assists for Bradley. They have 26 field goals. 19 assists on 26 field goals is absolutely outstanding. Bradley with great job sharing the basketball and getting it done on the offensive side of the floor. Ten different players scored tonight for the Braves. They had seven dunks. They were above the rim. Really great defensively with some blocked shots. And the points in the paint was massive coming into this game. We talked about the discrepancy between, you know, kind of the big men on both, seat, both teams. It was 14 to 12 advantage for Bradley at halftime. In the second half, Bradley goes on a 16 to nothing run, points in the paint. Bradley just absolutely A plus game in the second half, Brian. Yeah, and, that, and that's what led to the final uh, margin and disparity there is the Braves put up over 90 in this one tonight, and they dominate here at home against Evansville. That's gonna wrap things up from Carver Arena here in downtown Peoria. 
For my partner, Matt McLean, and everyone on our Chef Tech production crew, I'm Brian Bino. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Again, the final from Peoria. It's the Bradley Braves 91, the Evansville Purple Aces 46. This has been a presentation of ESPN.